This unit's about derived units, um, what they are, but more importantly, how to convert them, because sometimes that's a little tricky. Remember, our basic units were kilograms, meters, and seconds. So mass for kilograms, length, meters, time, seconds. So when we put these guys together in a combination, then we have a derived unit. One example is speed. When we have speed, speed is in meters per second. Okay, Acceleration, which we're going to run into pretty soon, is in meters per second squared. Um, newtons, which is a force unit, is kilograms meters per second squared. And since that's so ugly, we rename it as a newton. You're going to run into that more later. Even volume units, like remember density? Remember you've done density since like eighth grade? Grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter? Yeah, see, we're not going to use milliliters in physics at all. But grams per cubic centimeter, it's, it's a combination of a, a mass unit and a length unit that's been cubed. See? So it's still a derived unit. So speed, the SI unit, when, we want, when we're doing speed, we want all of our things to be in meters per second. And so... A lot of times, I mean, we don't figure out meters per second. We're actually go going to find out how fast we walk in meters per second. But when you have your car and your car speedometer, your car speedometer gives you miles per hour. Miles per hour. Now, here's the neat thing. We are not going to convert between SI and standard units. So we're not going to go miles to kilometers or miles to meters. We're not going to do that at all. So miles per hour don't exist in our world. What we will do is kilometers per hour. And it's easier to convert them if you write them as an up-down fraction like this instead of going kilometers per hour. Because that slash is a little confusing. Because see how this fits neatly? into our t-bar. See how neatly that fit in? So kilometers per hour, you're going to put the kilometers on top. Per, you can read the bars per hour. And so if we were going to try to convert, let's just say 45 kilometers per hour, it doesn't even really need a number, but let's say we were going to do 45 kilometers per hour into meters per second because that's what we need and that's one of the things you're going to have to pay attention to this is another part of that standardizing your units pay attention to the units you're given if you're given kilometers per hour you need to make it meters per second so we know that we're going to convert these units one at a time so we know a kilometer kilo means 10 to the third good 10 to the third meters okay so now we have our meters that we needed. Okay, so we needed meters, we needed meters. But we need to change these hours to seconds. So we can go one hour is 60 minutes. And then our hours cancel. Now what we have is meters per minute, but we need meters per second, so we know one minute is 60 seconds. Do you see how I'm reading this bar? This could be kilometers per, see the bars per hour, or one minute is 60 seconds. So the bar can be like is, it's any two things that are like a ratio or two things that are equal to each other. And then to do this math, math wise we're going to take 45, we're going to multiply by 10 to the third. Now this bottom part you can do one of two ways. You can go divided by, and then you have to go do parentheses because your calculator does order of, order of operations. Or you can go 45 times 10 to the third divided by 60, 
and then you're kind of distributing that divided by sign divided by 60. And these two will give you the same answer. Okay, but I like the bottom way. That's what the way I do it because I don't like using parentheses. It's two more keystrokes I need to make, and I don't like them. So then you go ahead and do that math, and let's go ahead and do that math and make sure you got the answer right. Should have gotten 12.5 meters per second as your answer. So if you didn't do that, go back and put in your calculator again and see what you did wrong. Check, did you use the parentheses if you're going to do this? But it's much easier to go divided by, you can divide by everything that's on the bottom. So you go 45 times 10 to the third times 1, you don't have to do that, times 1, divided by 1, divided by 60, divided by 60. So you're going to divide by anything that's on the bottom. Okay, since our SI unit for length is a meter, our SI unit for volume is a cubic meter. Okay, and that's basically a cube that's a meter by one meter by one meter. Okay, so it's a meter by a meter by a meter, so that gives you one cubic meter. Well, remember, a meter is 100 centimeters, right? So it's 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. So you go 100 times 100 times 100. Turns out there's a million cubic centimeters in a cubic meter. Because a cubic centimeter, if you really think about it, it's just a little centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter. It's a little tiny thing. And there's a million of those little tiny things. If you think of how big a meter is, a meter stick is a meter. There's a million of those little tiny cubes, like little tiny sugar cubes, in that big one meter, cubic meter block. But when you're going to do the conversion, okay, so let's say we're going to do the volume. Let's say we have um, 500 cubic centimeters. Okay, and a cubic centimeter, remember, is the same thing as a milliliter. So we're not going to use any of the liters in physics, okay? So 500 cubic centimeters. All right, now when we do this conversion, we know that one centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters, because centi, centi, remember, means 10 to the minus 2. Or you could have written this, because this is the way mo more of us are comfortable. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. So you can either use the metric prefix or you can use this, which is what we're more comfortable with. For consistency's sake, using the metric prefixes, I'm going to go ahead and go with the top way of doing it. All right. Do we have cubic meters? The answer is no. Okay, you have to, you've only canceled out one of those centimeters. So what do you think you're going to have to do? You're right, you're going to have to do it two more times. So you go 10 to the minus 2 meters, 1 centimeter, 10 to the minus 2 meters, 1 centimeter. And that cancels with one of those, and that cancels with the other one. And now you have meters times meters times meters, which is cubic meters. And so this should come out to, when you're done, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters. So cubic centimeters are really small. This is half a liter right here. So, you know, think of, this is like almost like a soda can. Soda can's close to 500 milliliters. Okay. So this is a tricky one because you've got to do the conversion three times. So like we said, some other derived units are acceleration, meters per second squared. The Newton, even though we just write it as an N, it is a derived unit. The Pascal, which is a Newton per square meter. Even your density. Density in physics is going to be kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so all of these, even though it's only written with one thing, like newtons and pascals, 
those are derived units. Your only base units are the meter, well, not the only base units, but the ones we're going to use in the first semester. The only base units we're going to use in the first semester are the meter, the second, and the kilogram. Okay, these are the base units we're going to use in the first semester. Everything else is a derived unit. So don't get sucked into thinking a kilogram is a derived unit because it starts with kilo. It's not. It's that's our base unit. That's the unit that we want to use in all of our calculations. That's our standard unit. All right. So you got some conversions to do on your pretest. So get going on that, and we'll see you later.